Hey folks, welcome. Here we discuss real stories by real people. Today we have the story of a man whose wife cheats to heal from her grief. Let's see how it goes. Story 1. I, 28, and my wife, 26, had been in love since we became teenagers. But then, we hid it behind childish banters. We lived in a small town where we saw each other almost every day, and it seemed like each sight kindled what we shared. When she turned 17, her mom gave us the go-ahead to date. She even placed her on birth control pills. When she finished high school, I was still in town, nursing my last surviving family member, my dad, who eventually died two months after. I proposed to her on her 19th birthday, and we got married shortly after. Much to the chagrin of the townspeople who insisted we were too young. Her mother had consented to the wedding, and that was all that mattered. Not long after, her birth control pill failed. She was pregnant. Although we had wanted to wait, since it happened, we accepted it with joy. The next summer, she had our babies. At this time, we had moved to the city. Her mother came to stay with us to help us take care of the twins. She remained with us as they grew older. Unfortunately, she fell ill and died. It was a hard time for us, especially my wife. She had become a permanent fixture in our lives, so we found it difficult to cope with her absence. I was heartbroken, but I tried to be there for my wife who kept withdrawing into herself. She had had an inseparable bond with her mom, so I understood her pain. Even when it felt like she didn't care about our daughters anymore. She would go for days without doing as little as touching them. It hurt me to see her act that way. They were also hurting from the loss of their grandma and they needed their mother. I read books and researched how to help her, but she kept getting worse. She started drinking and getting drunk regularly, barging into our daughter's room in the middle of the night to wake them with her gabble. The final straw was when I received a call to come and pick up our older daughter from school because it was two hours past closing time. My wife was supposed to pick her up and they had tried calling her but it had gone straight to voicemail. I had taken the younger one to the hospital because she had fallen sick. The sight of my daughter almost in tears made me see red. When we arrived home, I found my wife watching TV while nursing a bottle of whiskey. I asked her why she hadn't picked up our daughter and she shrugged and said she forgot. How could a mother forget her daughter? I told her that she was hurting our daughters with her insensitive attitude. She slammed me for being selfish and cruel. She claimed that she couldn't hurt our daughters even if she tried, that she was just in mourning. Then she yelled at me for lacking empathy. I felt guilty. Not that she was right about her accusations, but because I was responsible for her. I needed to make sure she was fine. That night, when our daughters had gone to bed, I spoke to her about getting professional help through counseling. She turned down the idea and told me she would be fine if she stayed alone for a while. She wanted to move out, but I didn't consent to it. She wasn't in the right frame of mind to stay alone. She later left without my knowledge. I was worried sick and thought she had gone missing, but two days later she called to tell me she was fine. She explained she had moved out to get herself in order and would not return anytime soon. I was angry, but I held it in. If it would make her better as she claimed, then I didn't mind that much. I told her I'd be bringing our daughters to see her weekly. She tried to convince me otherwise, but I insisted and she sent me her current location. Our daughters were not keen on seeing their mother and I knew why, but I was determined to fix their broken bond. After school on Fridays, I would take them to her and pick them up on Sunday. Every time they returned, they would complain about a strange guy who made them scared, who touched their mother and made her make weird sounds. I thought they were making it up to convince me to stop the visit. When they had to go back, they would throw tantrums. I should have listened to them. I should have let them be. I didn't know what happened, but they suddenly stopped talking. They stopped crying or showing emotions. They became too calm, unlike the bubbly girls who used to talk for hours on end. I didn't know what to do. It didn't help that their mother kept insisting there was nothing wrong with them. One day, I went to drop them off and I saw a strange car in front of the house. I let them down and asked them to head in. On second thought, I followed them in and stared in shock at the scene unfolding before me. 
My wife and a strange looking guy were scantily dressed and making out on the couch, unperturbed. My daughters didn't spare them a glance as they went into what must have been their room. Their actions told me they had seen this a million times and I almost cried. When my wife sighted me, she gave me a lazy nod and disentangled from his cuddle. I asked her if this is what she meant by getting better and she said yes. She warned me not to think much of it, that she was just trying to heal. She continued rambling about healing from her grief and other nonsense. Everything my daughters had told me came rushing to mind. I felt like I had failed them as a father. I had shunned their complaints and turned deaf ears to their tantrums, but now I knew they were right about everything. I still don't know what to do about my ruined marriage. Perhaps I'll get a divorce or separation. I'm not sure which one will be best for my daughters. I just want to do what's best for them and give them a good life. Update. After thorough counseling from my lawyer, I filed for divorce and opted for 50-50 child custody just in case my ex-wife wanted to return to our daughter's lives. She asked me to keep the house as she would be staying with her lover. For the safety of my daughters, I had run a check on her lover and it turned out her lover is just as dangerous as he looks. He's a criminal with a history of arrests and drug addiction. But I don't need to worry about him because my ex doesn't want my daughters around her and they don't want her either. Call me a bad father, but I hope it remains this way. Update 2. After 7 months. Guess who's been calling me non-stop and begging me to come back? My ex-wife. According to her, her lover's been hitting her and getting extremely violent. He doesn't care that she's pregnant with his child. She's scared he might kill her and wants to leave but she has nowhere to go back to except my home. I don't know why she thinks I care about her and why she thinks my home is open to infidels, but she's wrong. I've told her to have fun with him and cheat on him if it gets extreme. God, I sound like an imbecile and I love it. I'm glad to hear you sound better, OP. I'm sure your daughters are well too. Your ex-wife dealt with her grief destructively. No one could understand the pain she was probably feeling after losing her mom, but she should have taken up your offer for therapy instead of drowning herself in alcohol. You did all you could for her, especially when your daughters didn't want to go to her. You felt they should because you didn't want their relationship with her to turn sour, but unfortunately, she didn't care as much as you did. I wish you would listen to your kids earlier than you did too, but what matters is that they're good now. I can only wish your ex-wife finds her way herself because you obviously won't be helping her again. Take care, OP. Story 2 I admit, I, 22 male, live a privileged lifestyle. I live and work in the UK after migrating at a young age and going to school to get a good education. My girlfriend, 24, is my ex now, but I will refer to her as girlfriend for the purpose of this post. Girlfriend is poor and lives in the slums of the Philippines outside of the Manila area. We met over one and a half years ago and had a somewhat unstable long distance relationship until recently. Friday 3rd November, on top of our heavily pressured relationship, I was out in Switzerland on a family trip without my volition. Flights were booked and expenses were paid so I had no reason not to go, other than forever severing relationships with my family members. Bear in mind that I had already left the Philippines in December the previous year. I promised to see her again after getting a job and starting a career. I still blame myself for leaving her. Girlfriend, desperate to see me, tries to find a high-paying full-time job in sales, she calls it. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a scam. She's not clever. So the boss invites her for training and they end up at a pub the same night. She's an alcoholic, so obviously she complies, with money being scarce. The Situation Saturday 4th November, she confesses. I'm describing the story as she tells me while leaving out embarrassing details but keeping important ones. It started out as an argument because I kept arguing with her about trust and that we show none of it to each other. Followed by the same typical, but I love you spiel. I initially started by saying we should break up about one week ago while not officially breaking up and letting it drag until now. I guess that she didn't handle it well because of what happened next. As girlfriend tells me, the boss man tells her that some men rape women to get what they want. And she only complied because she was thinking of me or protecting herself. 
Picture this. An extremely intoxicated girlfriend was thinking of me while allowing herself to be sexually harassed by the boss man, and this is okay for her because she was protecting herself. I think it's delusional. Regardless, I believe the way she tells this story because I know that if she were raped, she would be the first to apologize to her rapist since she's too kind to other people. Just not to me. Extremely drunk girlfriend tells boss man that as long as he doesn't do anything to ruin her life, she'll do anything. So, apparently, the boss man uses his company's money to book a night in a hotel and they sleep together. She says that she helped him ejaculate to protect herself, but there was no intercourse. She couldn't tell me the whole story because she was too drunk to remember. She checked to make sure he was clean. I don't know to what extent, though. She doesn't carry a rape kit, so there's no telling if boss man used a condom. But she made sure she got out okay while being extremely drunk? I know this story is so common in the fills with corruption scattered all over Manila, so I'm not shocked. Employees sleeping with boss men to increase their reputation. But to think that my kind-hearted girlfriend had to experience it firsthand, it's hard to believe it was consensual. Then again, I can believe it because of the pressure that our LDR was putting on us. Her more than anything. And the fact that she was drunk as F. Immediately after her story, I asked her what she plans to do next. She has not signed a contract while this happened. So technically, she's not even in the company. She wanted a full-time job, but Boss decided to suggest she take part-time to work on her nursing schedule. While she's not actually in the company, she feels obliged to complete the training and chooses to spend more time working for a company with an effing rapist, Boss, than to effing report it. What? Saturday, I'm writing this more as a therapy session for myself to decide what to do. I can't do this alone. I feel like dying. I really wish she was lying because of the pressure. I'm just concerned. How can she get therapy? She doesn't want me to tell anyone, so obviously this is a throwaway account for safety. Someone help me find closure. I don't have access to a computer, so sorry for formatting. I hope I don't get shit on for putting this here. I want serious replies, but I don't want to appear like I'm struggling because I can't imagine what she's going through. OP, at a minimum, your ex was too drunk to remember what happened. She wasn't sober enough to properly consent to anything sexual they did that night in the hotel. I would urge your ex to cut off all ties with that company and seek therapy. If you have had sex with her since this happened, I would get yourself tested. I would also reassure her that you believe what happened, and if she wants to report the incident, you'll support that decision.